Hey everyone, welcome back to our math series. Today we're going to answer the question of why do we oftentimes need to add zeros when multiplying? This question came from one of our viewers, and if you have a question of your own, you can leave it in the comments below. To understand why zeros are needed, we need to go back and review a couple of things. First, multiplication is commutative, which means we can multiply in any order that we choose. Second, you can use the distributive property to multiply one of the factors to the sum of the other factor written out in expanded form. But the question being answered in this video is why do we sometimes need zeros when multiplying in a vertical format? To help you understand why, I'm going to show you this multiplication problem three ways. I'll begin with the most familiar way, 12 times 4 written like this in a vertical format. I am assuming that you already know the basic process for multiplying a pair of factors like these. First, I multiply 4 times 2 to get 8, and then 4 times 1 to get 4, and the product is 48. Now that was probably very easy and familiar to you. Next, I use the commutative property to change the order, and I'll multiply 4 times 12 in this same vertical format. Hopefully this looks a little strange to you because normally a math teacher would not encourage you to place the smaller factor on the top. But to help you understand why we sometimes need zeros, this will hopefully be a good demonstration. So to multiply, we would multiply the 2 to the 4 to get 8, and we are done with the 2. Then we would multiply the 1 to the 4 to get 4. And the last step is to add these two partial products to get 12. But wait, didn't we get 48 last time? And I think you already know that 12 times 4 can't be 12. So what did we do wrong? Let's do this again to find the mistake. We'll start off again by multiplying the 2 to the 4 to get 8. Now before we continue, I want to remind you that 12 written in expanded form is 10 plus 2. We already multiplied the 4 by the 2. So now we are going to multiply not 1, but really 10 to that 4. And 10 times 4 is 40. And that red 0 is what you would call a placeholder in the partial product, so that when you go to add them together, your digits are lined up by place value, and you get 48 and not 12. Let's try another example. This time, we'll multiply 542 times 136. Why don't you try it on your own and come back to check your answer? We'll begin by multiplying 6 times 2 to get 12. So I'll bring down the 2 and carry the 1. Then I'll multiply the 6 to the 4 to get 24, and then add 1 to get 25, bringing down the 5 and carrying the 2. And then I'll multiply the 6 to the 5 to get 30, and then add 2 to get 32. And now we are done with the 6. Before we move on to the 3, I want to remind you that this bottom factor here is 136, and 136 in expanded form is 100 plus 30 plus 6. We already multiplied by the 6, and now this next factor of 3 is really 30, so we need to add a 0 as a placeholder before we start multiplying. Now we multiply 3 times 2 to get 6, and then 3 times 4 to get 12, and 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16. And we are done with the 3 or 30. Now we have one digit left, but remember, it is not just a 1, but a 100 instead. And 100 has two zeros, so we will place two zeros in the partial product before we start multiplying. Now we can multiply 1, one times 2 to get 2, and 1 times 4 to get 4, and 1 times 5 to get 5. Now that the digits in the partial product are lined up by their place values, we can add them together to get 73,712 as the final answer. I hope this video was helpful, and remember if you have any questions or if there's a specific math topic you'd like me to cover in the next video, drop it in the comments section. I love hearing from you. Be sure to click on one of these two videos next for more awesome math. 